Hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your Climate Watch update for the month of November and also going into December. Brought to you by IBM and ruralweather.co.nz. We kick off with the animated map for the end of October. Look at all these thunderstorms up in the tropics. La Nina is forming. That means we're going to be seeing more thunderstorms in this region here. Some of them will be drifting down in towards northern New Zealand as well. You're going to see some of that as we go through the rain maps right through the next month ahead. All right. Let's start off with the usual first seven days of November. This is what the next week is looking like. Now this map shows pretty simply red is drier than average, white is average, and blue is wetter than normal for this time of the year. As you can see, wetter than usual down in this corner. Most other parts of New Zealand are either about normal or they're leaning drier than average. Obviously a big chunk of Australia is in that red zone, but what we're seeing is this blue down here is a very good sign for New Zealand. Rainmakers in this region drift our way, that's why you're seeing a lot of blue out here and white, showing that there's kind of normal rainfall coming out of Australia and moving into some parts of New Zealand. There's even a little hint that maybe some inland parts of the Upper North Island might start to see um, wetter than usual weather because of the afternoon downpours that pop up. The problem with them is that they're isolated, so we can't lock them in every day in the exact same place. All right, let's kick off with soil moisture now. So this is the current soil moisture levels across the country down just 10 centimetres. And as you can see, the whole country is basically leaning uh, drier than it should be. We've got a little bit of green over here on the west coast, otherwise there's not much blue showing up on that map, which shows most places are actually a little bit drier than they should be. Now we're going a metre down, 110 centimetres, and still a similar story. Now this doesn't surprise me much, because we've been pretty much in a rainfall deficit in many regions, some places for nearly two years. So the further down you go, it doesn't necessarily change. Normally by this time of the year, a metre down would be wet after a very wet winter. We're seeing some signs of wetness on the west coast and Southland, but most other places are in that kind of yellow zone, around about normal. Um, no one's in the wetter than usual category. So let's take a look, as we do, week by week for the next three weeks, tracking where the highs and the lows are. This is the best and cleanest way to try and figure out what's going on. And by this one here, October 31st, as we go into this weekend, I think you'll probably notice there's a good variety of highs and lows. For those who'd watched previous Climate Watch updates by us, you would have seen huge blocks of high pressure on this map. So this is a change. We're seeing more lows in this part of Australia. That's part of La Nina. They're forecasting something like a 67% chance of increased cyclone activity this year along that eastern side. And they've already had some rain and hailstorms over there. Uh, also, the Southern Ocean full of low pressure. That's pretty standard for this time of the year. We've also got a lot of big highs just out to our east. That is a classic La Nina setup to have highs out on this side of New Zealand. That's what encourages the subtropical winds down and across us. That's a typical spring forecast though for Saturday, October 31st. Let's go forward another week. So as we kick off the second week of November, there is an uptick in high pressure. Big blocks of high pressure, once again, coming in from the west. But we've also got these lows around it. So it's not a solid line as it was a month or so ago. There's still some breaks. And it's actually these two lows here that I'm quite interested in because this can pull down more moisture and create afternoon downpours. That's what some of the computer modeling is suggesting. Certainly that's what uh, previous La Ninas have done. They've increased the chance of those afternoon downpours through inland areas. All of this is low pressure down here in the Southern Ocean. That's fairly standard at this time of the year. What we're also noticing are the highs dropping a little bit further south, and that makes northern areas like this more exposed to getting rainmakers and low pressure systems and showers. So the third week, November 14th, that's the halfway mark into November, and you can sort of look at this and work out one week from there what the weather will be like. And again, a lot of high pressure, but it's going further south. That's leaving Australia more exposed to rainmakers. A year ago, remember all the talk about the droughts, the forest fires, the bushfires going on in Australia, the massive smoke clouds inundating Sydney, and then eventually it got to New Zealand in January. Well, that weather isn't happening at the moment because of all the rainmakers that are occurring. So it's a totally different forecast. That bodes better for New Zealand, as well as the 
tropical weather that's bubbling up here although as you can see in the middle of November there's a big block of high pressure to our northeast that might limit some of the lows there's sort of a, a trough in here that's the beginning of a low but it's surrounded by so much high pressure it may not sort of produce much in the way of wet weather and a spring weather pattern because of all the highs and lows around us means that we get the windy westerlies and that's exactly what we still see into the middle of November so this is sort of a normal pattern to me for a building La Nina. There's nothing too dramatic on it just yet, but some signs of change. So let's take a look at the rainfall accumulation. We'll kick off with the first week. This is the next seven days uh, up until about the 7th of November. So the rainfall totals up here in the north, a lot of golds uh, and yellows. Might be a little hard to see, I'm not sure exactly if you can read the key, but it's 20 to 40 millimetres. Now that's all right, that's not too bad, but some of that will be in downpours, afternoon showers, not widespread rain going right across the region. That means not everyone gets affected by that weather. So it looks nice and even, but it may not actually form that way. The other thing to note is how dry it is all around here in the blue. This blue colouring you see out at sea to the east that goes all the way down here and up to the north, that's at the bottom of the scale, like five, five millimeters. So that really does prove that most of these downpours are going to be bubbling up around the ranges as thunderstorms and afternoon heat downpours. That's why they're a little more focused around the hilltops and Mount Zerapehu. Down on the west coast, that's a different story. You've got some subtropical rain, but you've also got these rainmakers coming out of Australia. And you can sort of see how there's this wet line from Australia into the west coast, whereas the, the blue here and here that's again at the very bottom of the scale, mostly dry weather around a lot of high pressure. So that's for the next seven days. Let's drag that out to 14 days worth of rain. This is taking us right through week two of November, around about the 13th or 14th of November. So again, the rainfall totals in the North Island haven't changed a great deal. You're seeing these afternoon downpours, Waikato's, that's a you know, typical region when it's a little humid with northerlies to see some big downpours. So you've got a couple of downpours there, but again, the very eastern side, all the way down to about Christchurch, you're in that green, maybe yellow territory. That means over the next 14 days, you've only got 10 to maybe 20 or 30 millimeters coming for you. That's not a lot. In Southland, depends on which side you're on. Good heavy rain on the west coast, that is a different blue. To that blue out there. I know that can be confusing for some of you, but that's why I'm here to explain it. Um, the rain over here, you're talking about maybe 200 millimeters or more on that western side, but this pale blue, that's under high pressure. That's back down to this one or two millimeters area. So you can see the rain comes into the west coast, drops there, then just out here where there's all this high pressure, almost no rain falling. One more note, the Chatham Islands, over the next 14 days, you're in that blue zone next to the green, that's five, maybe six, seven millimeters in 14 days. So that is not a lot of rain coming for you. Here's the November prediction. This is brought to you by IBM and Weatherwatch. Now you can see what the afternoon downpours are doing. They're bubbling up through inland areas. There's a very fine line. It may not be exactly where that line is, right? But just get the idea afternoon downpours through the central North Island, downpours up there in Northland, and they'll drift around a wee bit and move into different areas. Uh, now the west coast for November, expected to be drier than average. That's a little surprising. We'll see how that uh, forms, but this remember, this is not a rainfall accumulation map. This is just compared to normal. So the west coast may actually be leaning a little bit drier. And I would imagine that's because of those highs that are dropping a little bit further south. All right, we've also got temperatures in the mix here. Most of the country, all of the country, not most of it, all of the country, leaning warmer than average by maybe up to one degree or even more than that. That's um, unusual, but not out of the question when you look at the last few years. We've seen a lot of wind flows out of the subtropics and this year in particular, and it's these wind flows from the north coming down that are pushing our temperatures above normal. That's why we're seeing that coming through. It's a lot of these northerlies and subtropical conditions. All right, La Nina is with us. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology. We are in a La Nina at the moment, but how powerful is it? Well, that's a very important question because there's one thing saying we're in La Nina. It's another thing saying, well, how much rain are we going to get? So when we take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia, they're the scientists we trust the most in this area because uh, they're non-commercial. They are showing November, that arrow just going into La Nina. January, it's only just in that La Nina box. And then we get to March, 
and it's starting to pull back out again. So that shows December, January to me will be the peak of La Nina. That's the best chance to get a rainmaker coming into the north. And I've been saying this a few times lately. Look at La Nina as the silver lining to the dry weather, not the silver bullet. We're not really sure yet if it's going to produce the big soaking rainmakers everywhere where we need it. For example, the Hanua Ranges around Auckland where our largest city is in a water crisis going into summer. So we'd like to see some of those big downpours just sit right over the top of those water storage areas. The problem with these downpours is they bubble up in a slightly different place each day and various sea breezes will move them around. But this is a good sign. This is a silver lining definitely going into summer. Um, it would be better if it was a little further down, but then I'd be getting complaints from all the holiday makers saying we don't want a wet summer. So I think we're trying to find the right balance here. We need some rain. I hope these downpours deliver it for you. That is all from us for Climate Watch for this month. We will see you again at the very end of November.